Welcome to another episode of my Artist Diaries series, and a big thank you to Aura Health for sponsoring this video. Art isn't a stable career by the traditional definition. You've probably heard this a million times by well-meaning family and friends that it's hard to make ends meet this way, and you should really do something else. And they're right, art isn't a stable career, but I'd argue that very few things are these days. In the age of artificial intelligence and mass layoffs and low union membership and a very challenging job market, it's hard to find any well-paying career that is truly stable. I think this term, when it comes to careers, is going to fall out of favor, or at least we're not going to think of it in the same way. Most employers don't do pensions anymore, and a lot of my friends aren't saving for retirement because they genuinely think that there's a good chance they won't even live that long. And that's crazy. Truthfully, I have decided to not think about that too much and just save for retirement anyway. You know, on the off chance, right? But what I'm trying to say is that the world is crazy. The average person isn't spending 15, 20, 30 plus years at just one company anymore. We are hopping around every few years. Most of my friends work in tech adjacent fields and very few of them have spent more than two years at the same organization. It's just not that common. You're job hopping all the time. And it's honestly the only strategy that really makes sense. Organizations don't reward you for being loyal. Salaries aren't growing with the cost of living and the companies that pretend to care about you often use that fake sense of familial love and camaraderie to perpetuate a really toxic work environment. It's bad. So no, art isn't a stable career, but so few careers are anymore. Don't let that stop you from pursuing your dream or starting something new. I personally am not worried. Yes, art is not stable, but I have confidence in the skills that I've built. If my business fell apart tomorrow, everyone stopped watching my videos and buying my art or my, you know, my notion templates or coaching or whatever, that would suck. That would really suck. I would absolutely spend some time mourning that loss, but, and this might sound crazy, I do feel some confidence that I'd turn things around, that everything would be okay. It would take some time, for sure. I'd have to start from scratch. Probably I would have to take on like some kind of part-time job or something while I built things up again. But I, I don't know. I think I could do it. It isn't just luck that got me where I am. It's a little bit of luck, for sure. But it's also all of the skills that I have, that I've been building along the way, the network of people that I know, the equipment that I have, even though I don't think that's a big part of it. But it's like the soft skills. It's everything I've been doing, the accumulation of like all of these skills over the past, you know, four years. That's a lot. That's a lot of knowledge. And your knowledge is really an immensely underappreciated aspect of building a small business or growing a following online. The numbers do not matter. Your material success is almost irrelevant when you compare it to the skills that you're building. You're not just doing art, even though that's, of course, like a really big part of it, right? But you're also, you're writing scripts for videos, sales copy for your website and your email newsletter. You're building product photography and photo editing skills. If you post video content, you're building videography, color grading, I don't know, like sound mixing and like video editing skills, all of those things. You're building proficiency in dozens of high demand skill sets. And if you try to spin up your own thing, if you try to start your own small business or grow a following online, it doesn't work. Even after all of your work, after years of effort, it doesn't shake out. You have those skill sets to fall back on. You can pitch yourself as a value add to other creatives and other small businesses. If you struggle with doing everything like I do, they are also struggling with that. Imagine how you could leverage everything that you know, everything that you've been doing, all of these skills that you have to help someone else. Just taking maybe 20% of their work off of their plate. That's not making art. Imagine how grateful you would be if someone offered that service to you and how much you would be willing to pay for that if you were successful, right? It's a, it's a lot. If I could guarantee that like 100% satisfaction with hiring someone to do that, I would pay them very generously. I don't 
actually talk about this much anymore, but throughout 2022, when my channel was kind of just starting to grow, I actually worked as a video editor for Chelsea Lang. Chelsea was a great boss. She was very hands-off. She's an incredible oil painter with her own channel and mentorship program here on YouTube. And I emailed her asking if she needed a video editor back when I was just starting out. And I probably stood out from the crowd of everyone else pitching themselves to her in her inbox because I was just like her. I was also an oil painter, also a content creator, and I had a portfolio of videos that were public on my own channel to show off my work. She could see really easily what I could do and the skills that I had. And I pitched myself to her as a solution to a problem that she was experiencing. As a creator, a content creator and an artist in my own life, I really struggle with finding the time to make art. Every additional responsibility or task or deliverable in my business is just another thing that's taking more time away from my art. My art is the bedrock, the foundation of what makes this whole thing work, right? If I don't make enough art, I don't have stuff to share with you guys. I don't have, I don't have the knowledge, I don't have the experience, everything falls apart. I have to treat every new responsibility with a lot of caution, a lot of skepticism. Like every brand deal that I take on, I need to be really sure about, right? And if I'm having this problem, and this is even before I was full time, right? If I was having those struggles, then I could only imagine what Chelsea was going through. Like, that's got to be a huge obstacle for her. And so I pitched myself to her and I was like, hey, like, I will take some of this video editing off of your plate so that you can get back to focusing on making more art and the other parts of your business. You don't need to do this. I can do it for you if you want. And that worked. And so we worked together for, I think, something like nine months. It was genuinely great. She was amazing to work with. I gained a lot of really valuable skills. And at the time, I really needed that money. It was invaluable. I wasn't full time yet on YouTube and that really helped me. It helped me pay rent. It helped me get groceries. And that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Using the skills that you're building for your own business to help other creative people. You know creative people inside and out because you are one. You know their problems, their pain points, how much they struggle with time management, the areas of their business where they're leaving money on the table by not taking full advantage of existing opportunities, etc. If you are struggling with that feeling of insecurity, of feeling like art isn't a stable career and therefore not worthy of pursuing, I really want you to try and internalize the knowledge that you have so much to offer. So much to offer. So what? If you try this thing out and it doesn't shake out, that's fine. You're building so many amazing, valuable skill sets in the process. This is the kind of stuff that I wish I understood when I was just starting out, or even before then. I put off taking my art seriously for so long. I didn't go to art school and pursued a political science degree because I just genuinely didn't think that art was a viable career path. There were too many uncertainties. And I've been very open on this channel about the fact that I didn't grow up with a lot of money, and then I get a lot of anxiety about financial stuff, and uncertainty about the future. It's been a very long road to get more comfortable with that. And when I talk about this confidence that I feel now, this self-assuredness, I want you to understand how hard it has been to get to this point, both in terms of my business and my mindset. This confidence has been fought for. It has been a hard one. And sometimes it's easy to acknowledge stuff like this about yourself and still just have a really hard time actually really internalizing and believing this about yourself, that you are someone that can provide a lot of value. Doing this kind of self-confidence and mindset work is really challenging, especially if you're just doing it by yourself. But maybe you don't have to do it alone, and that's where the sponsor of this video could come in, Aura Health. Hear me out, because I really do think that this is something that a lot of you guys will get genuine value out of. Aura is a new all-in-one app for wellness that provides the world's largest mental wellness content library and community. They have guided affirmations and meditations on reducing anxiety and building self-confidence, which is exactly what we're talking about today. And they also have just so much more, tons of stuff. A lot of meditation apps only offer a one-size-fits-all library, but 
but Aura has partnered with hundreds of coaches and therapists worldwide to provide something for everyone. They have the most extensive library of mindfulness meditations in the world. They're trusted by over 7 million people and have over 30,000 five-star reviews. They've also won actual awards. I've been using Aura to reduce my own anxiety and build my own self-confidence over the past few weeks, and while I was initially pretty skeptical of the whole meditation thing, I think it's genuinely helped me just clear my mind a little bit. You can get started with Aura completely for free on their website using my special link in the description. The first 500 people to use that link will get a free trial and an exclusive 25% off discount, so don't hesitate. Thank you so much to Aura for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to our talk. I used to be so genuinely terrified of that uncertainty, but it isn't something to be scared of. Every tiny success that you have in your business will eat away at that fear, because every tiny win reaffirms that you are good at what you do, that having confidence in yourself isn't crazy or unfounded. You're building up this massive pile of evidence that is actually literally well-founded, like you have the receipts. Lean into that uncertainty, have faith in yourself, you can do this. Like I said in the video a few weeks ago, growth shouldn't feel comfortable. I feel this really strongly. I feel like growth is, that's just not what growth is. Growth, it just isn't comfortable. It should feel a little nerve wracking, a little scary, and you just have to go out and do the thing anyway, and you have to do it a little bit scared. The painting that you've been seeing me work on throughout this video, which we don't finish today, by the way, is a big project and it's going to take me a lot of time to really get right. And it's also something that I have been terrified to start working on. If this particular sketch looks familiar to you, it's probably because I showed the process of the original pencil sketch in a video a few months ago. That sketch has kind of been gathering dust, unfortunately, while I gathered the confidence to start working on the actual painting. Eventually, I did start the painting, and despite spending hours on it, I hated the results. It was terrible. Things felt too cramped, too squished together. So I set that panel aside, and I let it gather even more dust while I worked up the courage to try again on a different panel, a larger size, something that would hopefully solve some of the problems that I was facing in the first attempt. And finally, this week, still not having gathered the courage to start over, I just decided to start anyway, to just do it scared. I spent hours getting the sketch just right, making adjustments as needed to the panel, playing around in Photoshop to figure out the right color palette, and I approached the painting with a very healthy degree of fear and anxiety. Every single brushstroke was deliberate, it was planned out. I was like kind of terrified the whole time, but eh, you know, it, it's, it is what it is. And I like it so far. It's undergone quite a few big structural changes over the course of this process, even so far. And it's still in a very rough stage and it's quite a bit of work. I really want to add in some clouds to the background. I kind of want to shift the whole color palette a little bit more in the purple direction. And while I have the colors and like the value masses generally blocked in, I need to go and add a lot of detail and refining some things and clean up the edges. But that is that is a task for another day. It is really shaping up to be something that I hope that I can be proud of in the future, though. And if it fails, I'll just sand it down and start over. No big deal. Every tiny little mistake that I am making, I will hopefully be able to learn from, right? And so I hope this video inspired you to be a little more confident in yourself and less afraid of starting something new. I know a lot of you guys that are watching my videos desperately want to take your passions full time and just haven't started yet. And I see that fear. I know what that's like. Listen, you're never going to figure out whether or not you could have succeeded if you don't try and really give it your all. You're just never going to feel ready. It's never going to feel comfortable. You're always going to be a little terrified. And that's just what that's going to be. Friendly reminder that I have art prints, blankets, and Notion templates available on my website. I'm also now offering paid coaching and mentorship opportunities because people keep asking for that. And so despite feelings of imposter syndrome, I'm going to do that anyway. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can check out the description. And if you want to see more videos, there'll be some on the screen right now. I hope to see you guys there and I hope this video 
yeah, just gave you a little more confidence. All right, that's it for me. Bye, guys. <laughs>